we got Comic Con at home coming up this week, and this is no big surprise to me, right? Because we got Marvel Studios and DC saying they're going to skip Comic Con at home. To me, Comic Con at home is not even really a, a, a big event. We know Marvel and DC have their own thing, right, Andy? Yeah. So not surprising at all that they do this move and they they pull out right there's a light at the end of the tunnel with current world situations and they have a moment where they either have to uh they have to make a decision they either have to hit the brakes or hit the gas one or the other so they decided to pull out of this i get that and i mean you gotta from their perspective i completely understand that because what type of buyer are you attempting to attract that's a much smaller market there than what they could be putting their money into now, depending on how things shake out. So I, I definitely get it, but it is, I mean, it is kind of sad that they're not going to be doing it to be honest with you. Yeah. But I also think that, you know, they're, they're doing virtual and then they're planning on something in November, like almost like a mini San Diego comic-con. Right. So hopefully mm -hmm. at that point you'll get that traditional hall H experience, but I, you see it more and more with, you know, Disney and D23 doing a lot of Disney plus Marvel stuff. And then you're seeing, you know, that then DC fandom, they even talk about in that article. It's like, they're also, it's kind of like similar with Comic-Con that you're also seeing if you're a video game person, E3 has kind of done the same thing where you have Nintendo, Sony and Microsoft almost doing their own thing and not part of E3 anymore. But John, what do you think? About the, uh, about them pulling out? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, these are these are mega corporations. I'm not sure that the people that are in charge of making these decisions really have their finger on the pulse of our micro community because we're really like a sub subculture. Like comic book nerds like us are very uh, I don't even know what you would call it. It's uh, it's less than a subculture, I would say. Like it's such a small, tiny like it's it is almost like an extended family. You know what I mean? And And I just don't think that they really. Uh, the people in charge of making those decisions really have their finger on the pulse. Like they're more uh, looking at it as a like a corporate decision, like a some type of administrative function that they have to perform. So, I mean, I'm not that interested in online cons anyway. Um, I, I am going to be at Terrificon, like we were talking about earlier, um, but we're not even going to have a table. We're just going to be walking around. Uh, my wife and I. We'll be wearing these shirts, so if anybody's You'll be there, walk around like a family reunion at amusement parks with a big old banner, six one six. Yeah, like I, you know, we're gonna visit like our partners, Comics Elite, have a table there. We're gonna be at that table for a little bit, helping them out and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, for the most part, we're just going for the experience. Because my wife was like, "Do you want to get a table?" And I'm, and I said, "I just want to be there." Like for me, it's about being there. The online experience, like we were all dealing with COVID, that was the best you could do. I thought it sucked. I didn't like any of the online stuff. Um, I mean, it's something to do. Don't get me wrong. But if you can have an, an in-person con and like we're all fully vaccinated, my wife and I. So um, I just can't wait to go and hang out and talk to people and talk about comics. I mean, I, I, it's hard to do that. You know, like we're doing it now online, but totally different experience at a con in person con. Yeah. And we're, we're all actually in the same room right now. We just decided to do this <laughs> online. But... Yeah. 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 It's a gigantic room. <laughs> yeah. I, I get it though. I feel like at the very beginning, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket and make this massive investment to grow something that's never happened before all these online conventions and put all that time and effort and money and hire people and create positions for this thing, for it to bottom out. And it didn't. And they decided not to capitalize on that. And then a lot of people are coming. They're at that gateway where, you know, do you go one way or do you go the other? And as things are right now, I understand why they're not attempting to put more time and effort into that. Mm -hmm. yeah, totally. Dang comics. Well, uh, in your opinion. Yeah, I think the reason they're all going on their own is because it's really corporations trying to carefully curate their marketing, like and have total control over their marketing, have no leaks, and control the narrative of where their projects are going. I think that's like what Disney did, so that they can usher out bad films, and no one really noticed until it was like too late because they controlled it so hardcore. And um, but. I think these companies are underestimating the fan base and how like we kind of kept comics alive and we kind of kept them alive until they got cool enough to even make into films in a sense. And coming to a con like builds that human connection to the projects, which is like 
I think it's a missed opportunity that they're not they're not realizing the cost ultimately because I think the fan community is has a lot more weight than they're assuming right now, and that we, yeah, we will help them sustain when the movies stop doing as well too because like that's gonna happen eventually and yeah. they need us again. So it's best they you know I don't know I that's maybe I'm biased you know but. Yeah, I get your. I see your point, but I also see them also, like you said, keeping creative control. Where it's like, why do something online through San Diego Comic Con when we're going to do our own online DC fan event or Marvel Disney fan event and do it online and have own creative control of, of how we market it and, and put it out. But it's so sterile. That's the problem with these like completely curated events. Like, there's no fun little leaks and like speculation just based on like how actors are just like chatting and they say something and you know, everyone's like going wild and it's just like there's so much joy going on but these curated events it's so sterile and everyone's pretending they're having a good time and it's just not the same and i think they're gonna just gonna be blowback <laughs> oh we got attack peter in the house Love right, that guy. if you guys haven't checked out his stuff make sure you check out attack peter on youtube instagram huge skybound collab that guy's got some crazy art one of the most fun interviews i had was with peter santa maria so thanks for joining us andy tomberlin l tomberlin we got two andys here what do you think about marvel and dc pulling out of comic-con at home do they just not want marvel dc babies or what yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah first off that for sure there it is um but yeah, I, I'm kind of with John on this. I think maybe they see it as a whole as these online Comic Cons have not done well. You know, um, they they want no part of it. Uh, so I, I I don't know, man. I I'm an indie guy anyway, so they can pound sand. But uh, yeah, no, I, I don't know. I, I think it's because of the experience of the Comic Con at home not going over well is what is the driving force behind this. I'd be interested to know if they did put it on this year in person, would they have gone then, or would they be branching off and doing their own thing, um, like the, the sterile environment? Uh, yeah, so. I think I think it really comes down to if, if in person is so much better that that Hall H, you know, it's like synonymous with comic-con with with those big with those big talks and we covered on this channel last year that comic-con at home and even in that article if you read that bleeding core article a lot of those panels were like duds it seemed like hey you had time to pre-record but the presentation wasn't exactly there one of the best panels last year was funko and then boom did a great panel and i think people have had some lessons learned from that and hopefully we'll carry it over to here but one of the best online cons that i have seen i won't even call it a con but skybound expo had an expo this past weekend and a lot of their their programming i'm not a big guy that likes to sit there and watch online panels all day long but i found myself in there watching you know robert kirkman talking to robert liefeld i saw you know, attack peter is in the in the stream right now and they're sponsored they made me want to go out and buy freaking ramen noodles because they look delicious watching them all eat it but there's some great panels on there and comics about live. They had that attack Peter invincible variant. They had that, um, that Clementine cover. People are, are sleeping on that Clement, those Clementine covers because there's a young, young teen graphic novel that they're building around. There's, there's supposed to be a lot of programming behind that telltale game Clementine character. That's in the works from the rumors I've heard, hmm. but it, we'll wait and see how at, at home, Comic Con goes this year, but I will say this as well. I give I've given the bad about it, what I don't like, but I also think a lot of those San Diego Comic Con exclusives, right? The Funkos, the comics, all that has been more accessible because they're selling them online instead of having to lottery raffle, wait in line, you know, all this other stuff to try to get your hands on one that's always hard for me to get. <laughs> takes forever. Are those Toy Tokyo Messes of the Universe pops that come out all the time? But I found a site. I'm waiting for them to be announced so I can go in there and get my my, my, my Funkos and my San Diego Comic-Con Canto exclusive. Yeah, I like that cover for sure. Yeah, that never-ending story homage. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's what it looks like. 